out here at and joining me is Jacob DeVecchio, who is the CEO of the Oklahoma Fungi Company. That's Jacob, right. Jacob, it's morel season. There's kind of a fever in the air. There sure is. So I personally have never morel mm -hmm. hunted, hunted, I guess you yeah. call it. So, Hunting, foraging, whichever you like to say. <laughs> so tell me, I mean, is this a good area or what are we looking for? So, What's the season? Yeah, typically morels will grow mid-March to the beginning of May. Okay. Um, when you see the red buds blooming, that's a great indicator that the morels are starting to grow. But we're also really, the morels are dependent on rain. And so if we don't have any rain, we won't see any morels. It's kind of been lack of rain up here in the north, northwest. Yeah, so. and over by the riverbank and down by creeks is oftentimes where you'll find these things growing. Okay, so we are by the riverbank here. Um, but before we get started, am I dressed okay? Like there are certain Absolutely. things you need to take with you, right? There are a couple of things that you want to bring with you when you're foraging and not just bring with you, but that you want to wear. Okay. And so a couple of the things that you want to bring are of course, a mushroom identification guide. Okay. So you know that the mushrooms that you're looking at are actually the species that you're trying to identify. That's important. You know, all <laughs> mushrooms are edible, some only once. Okay. So very important to keep in mind. Another great thing to bring with you is once you've found an edible mushroom, is a mesh bag. Okay. The holes in the bag allow for the spores to spread throughout the forest on your hiking trail as your way out. So you're actually helping the organism spread and help distribute the spores. Okay, and I've heard about that, like not taking plastic bag, that right. way you kind of allow that to get some of the dirt off as well. Yeah, and one of the other things that I often recommend is to bring some insect repellent. Okay. So whether you use DEET or not is up to personal preference, but I highly recommend wearing insect repellent because there are a lot of ticks out there and a lot of other biting insects that I don't want biting me while I'm foraging morels. And they're not always on a path, right? You really kind of sometimes have to get into That's, the rough areas. Yeah, there are times where they'll grow in your front yard if you're lucky, okay. and a lot of other people like me have to get out into the thick of it and find them, <laughs> absolutely. Right. So what, anything else, you pruners or so, yeah, so a knife or anything? That one we... last thing that you could bring is if you are out in the thick of the forest, you can bring some pruners, okay. and this will help you cut away those thick briar patches. So whenever your, your leg is caught, you can take these out and cut away those thorns. Because if you yank your legs, sometimes those thorns will go deeper into right. your leg. And the last thing we want is to have to leave a good morel foraging spot because of some <laughs> hurt ankles. Maybe some band-aids too. Absolutely. Right? And so there's one last thing that I always recommend people take. And it's really important to keep in mind whenever you're harvesting edible mushrooms, if they're coming from the ground, you want to cut them from the ground. You don't want to pull. Okay. Whenever you pull the mushroom from the ground, it brings up that soil and it disturbs that part of the forest. So I always recommend bringing, whether it's a mushroom foraging knife like this with a brush on the end to clean off dirt, or just a regular pocket knife. Okay. And so whether you bring a knife or not, whether it's foraging or a regular pocket knife is up to you. This is $50 and a pocket knife most of the time everyone has at their house. So you don't need anything special, but it is important to cut and not pluck. Okay. It'll also keep your, your mesh bag cleaner as you're walking through the forest and you won't have to clean them as much when you get home. Okay, excellent information. So let's talk a little bit in general about morels. They're so popular, they're tasty, right? Absolutely, so they are. So what is it about the morel that it's it's different than like our white butch, button mushrooms, mm -hmm. right? So what's so unique about it? So one unique thing about morels is that they no one yet in the U.S. has learned how to grow them and is exporting them to other states. Okay. And so right now, everyone who's eating morels is oftentimes getting them from someone who's went out foraging. And so I myself will go out foraging mid-March to May to look for these mushrooms and I'll dehydrate them and save them for later months and oh, eat okay. them later. And okay. so you can eat them fresh or you can dehydrate them and save them for later. All and right. so that's one great thing about them. So what about the region? Like, are they just t towards Oklahoma or are yeah. they across the country? So or? they're across the country and across the world. Okay. The, the yellow morel, Morchella americana, that grows here in Oklahoma actually grows throughout the world. And so there are other lookalikes. There's the false morel. I heard about that one, There's yeah. also the burn morel. So there's a lot of other species of morels but the yellow morel, Morcella americana, is what everyone's looking for. So once you've got your bag packed, you have a pocket knife and a mesh bag, the next thing you wanna do is make sure you're wearing the right attire. Okay. I would prefer to wear long sleeves so that way any ticks or biting insects don't land on me, they land on the clothes you can take off later. I also recommend wearing long pants and boots. There's a lot of thorns and strong branches that can hurt your feet, so wearing nice boots or rain boots also helps keep those insects out. Okay. When it comes to actually getting out in the forest, a yeah, couple of... What, are, what things are we looking for, right? There's kind of natural areas. Yeah, some of the things you want to look for are down by creeks where there's access to water. Okay. Right now we haven't had a, a lot of rain, so mm -hmm. for the most part, 
places where that are moist around cedars or around creek banks are going to have that moisture that we're looking for. Okay, because cedars drop a lot of moisture, so Absolutely. They, they make that available to Even though they're invasive, they tap really deep and they bring up a lot of that moisture and those morels that grow around them oftentimes are some of the largest that you'll find. Okay, all right. Yeah. So what about like decaying stuff? I always think of decaying things with mushroom. Yeah. Is that what we're looking for? Logs yeah. that have fallen and stuff? Absolutely. So we're looking for not necessarily the trees that are alive, but some of the trees that are already dying or dead. So what we, we call deadfall. And okay. so deadfall fall is a, a tree that has fallen over branches that are on the ground and a lot of leaf litter okay those areas morels love to camouflage and they're really hard to find you can find them mid-march to the beginning of may but after that the soil temperature is too warm okay well let me ask you because i've heard some different gimmicks out there that there's yeah. some glasses that will help kind of set the morels apart from mm -hmm. the leaf litter do those work so uh, in my experience the fungi glasses are not something that i would spend 90 dollars on okay. the blue tint that they have isn't something that the morels are going to pop out and you actually see I would rather save that $90, put it towards gas money and going out <laughs> to the trail and spend some time looking. Okay, well, shall we go on a hunt then? Absolutely, let's get started. All right. So typically we'll find morels around fallen trees mm -hmm. or old stumps. And we actually have some right here. You can see this one right here is fresh. It's nice and yellow. And over here closer to you is one that's been sunburned and it's a little bit darker. Both of these are the same species. And great job, yeah, you found another one over there. here. There's probably a lot more growing in this area that are smaller. We're just waiting on rain to come and they'll get a lot bigger. Okay, so these are the same. One's yellow, one's brown. Right. Tell me a little bit, is it past harvest or why is it like that? So this one just has more moisture content. Okay. It has a lot more water. It is absorbed from the soil. Whereas this one's a little bit older and it's been sunburned, just to add that direct heat right on it and it's lost a lot of that moisture. Okay. Whenever the morels are covered by leaves like this, they can retain that moisture but when they're exposed to the sun, oftentimes they'll dry out. Okay. And I guarantee that this one in about two days will look just like that if we don't get any rain. So should, can we harvest this still? Or is yeah, this, this one you could definitely harvest. Both of them you'd prep the same way, okay. although this one, of course, aesthetically looks a little bit nicer. Okay. But they're both the same species. And one way that we can check is by pulling out the identification guide. Uh -huh. So we'll go to the morel side. Uh -huh. And right here at the very bottom, we see yellow morel. And we see, and this is basically what we're looking at right here. Okay. And so now I'm gonna take out the foraging knife. Okay. We'll let you move around the leaves okay. and we'll show you how to harvest instead of pluck. Okay. Also gonna bring out this mesh bag so that way we can put our harvested morel in here and allow the spores to spread around. So we just kind of clean the area around. You and... got it. So that way we can see the base and so you can see down here at the base, there's a lot of ridges. Okay. And those ridges help with the stability of the morel. As the water comes and it runs off or as the leaves change and shift, that stability helps the morel stand upright and grow without falling over and dying. So instead of pulling this from the ground and having a lot of dirt on it, we're gonna take our knife, we're gonna place it along the ground and we're slowly gonna cut. Okay. This will allow us to keep dirt off of the morel. And if there is any dirt, we can take the brush and we can brush it right off. All right. Now we want to make sure we don't pull it from the ground because that will disturb the soil. Okay. All we need is this and this, the soil can also make our bag a little dirty. And let's talk a little, this is the fruiting body, right? The organism is hidden underground. So by That's, taking this, are we robbing it from anything or? This is comparable to an apple growing from an apple tree. Okay. So the organism is always underground and living no matter the season but they only actually produce these morels mid-March until the beginning of May. And that's because the soil temperature and the rain is optimal for them to grow. Okay, so how do we know this is a morel? Well, one thing that I can see very clearly is the hole at the bottom, mm -hmm. and that's hollow. You can see all the way through to the top. And that's something that a lot of morels have. But one thing that we can do to make sure that this is exactly the species we think it is, is to cut it right down the middle and make sure it's hollow. Okay, so hollow is the key, huh? That's right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And Look as you can see, those are nice and hollow. Yeah. They're a little bit colder on the inside they as are well. They cool. Yeah, that's interesting because it's hot today. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. And so you can see this one over here mm -hmm. is a bit overwhelmed by the heat, but on the inside of the morels, it's nice and cool. And when this leaf litter covers them, it helps them retain their moisture. Okay. So because it's hot, we're doing this in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Is there a better time? Should we be doing this in the morning like cut flowers? <laughs> well, for us, the morning would be better because it's a little bit cooler. Okay. But for the morels, they're always here. They okay. won't move locations and they're not going to grow exponentially 
from the morning to the afternoon. It takes them a couple of days to get larger. One thing that's really important is rain. Oh. So if we were to get rain tomorrow, I would recommend leaving these to get a little bit bigger and coming back on day three. You can think of morel mushrooms as a sponge in the forest. The outside of them looks like a sponge, and whenever you cook them, they act like a sponge. They absorb all the flavor of your dish, so when you eat them, they don't taste like mushrooms. They taste like the sauce you cook them in. All right, well, Jacob, thank you so much. This is a pleasure harvesting my first morel. Should we keep looking for a few Absolutely, more? let's keep going. Awesome. It was a pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.